wanted people to walk into the one and only and first get a fright because they thought there was a real leopard walking through the lobby. I can say we're delighted to be involved with the uh, Cape, Cape Leopard Trust, uh, particularly in this Heritage Month. Uh, the, the, the Cape Leopard is, is one of those endangered species that we all need to do something to help protect. Uh, and I think, particularly at this time, tourism of, is of such importance to the future of this country uh, that uh, anything that we can do uh, to, to uh, encourage tourists to come here to see the amazing sights that are here, uh, then we all have to get involved and make sure that we preserve our heritage uh, and, and preserve the, the, the wildlife that makes this such a fascinating country for people to come and visit. The Cape Leopard is all that remains of the original Big Five that once roamed the Cape. And so it's really important that we realise this is the last big predator that we have in our area. September is Heritage Month and apart from the heritage from a history, it's really vital that we learn to nurture and respect nature. Leopards are the keeper of the keys when it comes to the ecosystem in the Western Cape. Uh, being the only large predator left in the area, if we don't help these leopards to survive, then we will be um, struggling as human beings to remain healthy in a healthy environment. Um, I first approached the GM of the one and only hotel to um, do an afternoon tea. Um, they are a supporter of the Cape Leopard Trust. And Richard said that he would be willing to support the Cape Leopard Trust with an afternoon tea. And coincidentally, I got approached by Dot Clerk. She's uh, the cake artist from Eat Cake Party and she explained that she wanted to do her cause cake this year dedicated to leopards. So it seemed like a great combination and we set up a, an idea to launch the afternoon tea event on the 13th of September which would run for a month at the one and only in partnership with the, the leopard cake and to raise money for our natural heritage. So I started by doing a lot of research on the pig um, leopard because it's very different to the um, leopards that are up in the Kruger. Uh, just wanting to get some movement in my cake, so I um, did a lot of research and then started with um, doing the structure and um, calculating the proportions and things like that so we can get it right. right. Um, after that, it should take a couple of days. Um, after that, we build the structure. That was take about two days. And so testing that it'll take the weight. Uh, there's uh, quite a lot of product used here. So we have uh, probably about 30 kilograms of chocolate and um, 15 kg of fondant and a lot of cake and, and a cream as well. So it needs to be calculated the structure. Um, after that, um, then the hard work begins of the sculpting, getting all of the um, the face is done and that's the detail. So in the end it's probably about 300 hours of work and um, six full extended days of painting. Um, it's been such a privilege just to study this animal and also just to bring into focus um, the, the need uh, for the focus on the fact that they don't lose too much of their um, habitat. They're slightly darker in their faces and very much more hairy. Um, so they'll all have different spots, every, every leopard will have spots. So trying to get the detail in here, obviously want to give it a hairy effect, although parts of them look smoother. So there was several different techniques that I used. I used cocoa butter um, just to, um, to be allow, it was like a oily, um, like using oil paints to be able to paint over that. And then I do a scraping with, with like a, um, a brush to be able to brush off some of the colour and that creates some of the spots that you get that gives it a very realistic um, look to it. So that was the real challenge just to make the, everything look realistic.